Thank you everyone for joining us today for sacrificing some of your day to attend our webinar. Hopefully you can gain some value from it. I am Ron Warman. I'm a partner at Affinity. I have been in legal technology since the late 90s. And about 15 years ago, my focus narrowed to document management, which has been my uh, passion ever since. Um, but my, my experience goes way back to the start of, of my technology career. So we're going to jump into this concept here today of the future of DMS. And so as we talk about document management systems and we talk about the future, we're going to start by you know, stepping back a little bit and looking at the evolution of document management. Uh, we're going to look at some of the more recent changes. Um, we're going to then see what's on the immediate horizon, you know, what's coming up in the next year or so. And then that last piece there is we're going to imagine the future. And uh, hopefully that graphic didn't make you too dizzy, but the, the pace at which document management is evolving is a somewhat dizzying pace. And so I thought it was appropriate to kind of focus on that. And you know, we're, we're approaching that takeoff ramp of, of pretty substantial changes. So let's start with the evolution of document management. So if I go back to the start of my career, you know, I worked at a law firm. And right off the bat, it was still largely working off of typewriters, word processors, um, you know, people marking up documents by hand, using the you know, technology to some extent, but computers were just starting to kind of become prevalent in something that was being used as a tool. And so when we talked about the physical paper, you know, the physical files, file cabinets, red welds, um, accordion files, whatever that might be, you know, this is something that was not an uncommon sight. And so as we got into the document management, that's just where we started, typewriters, dictaphones, and filing cabinets. And so this picture might be a little bit older than when I started, but it kind of conveyed the message of what it was like to kind of draft and, and, and modify documents. Then we had this evolution of technology and you know, computers started to become prevalent. They became a tool that we could use and we could start to use those to automate and uh, make tasks more efficient. And you know that was you know just the starter was with computers, but it really needed to have software to allow us to kind of do anything that we needed to. So things like word processors, you know, become uh, popular tools in allowing us to craft these documents, to format them, um, to do different types of styles and, and automation with them. And then with networks, we got the ability to then share and collaborate within our own law firms and our own offices. Once we got to the point where we had the basics of technology, now we start to see full-blown document management systems evolve. And so some firms historically have used network drives, you know, file shares, and that's kind of been their document management platform. And we still see today um, firms that are working that way. And as, as we go and work with them, they're either working that way and trying to get off of it, or they've kind of continued to work that way because they felt that's what worked best for them. Um, but to get into more complicated scenarios, you really needed a, a full-blown enterprise document management system. And the initial purpose of document management systems was really threefold. It was being able to tag documents with met metadata for easy searching and sorting. Uh, the ability to version documents. So for folks that were working out of network drives, network folders, when they were creating versions, what was the convention? You know, did they name the document differently? How were they keeping track of what was the latest? What if someone else saved their version somewhere else in their own folder? And how did you keep track of that and try to make sure you had the, the latest and greatest version? And then one of the most important aspects is the ability to search. Because after we've created content, how do we go back and find it? Whether it's the next day, whether it's months later, years later, you know, whether we're searching for that as a sample, as precedence, or whether we're searching to confirm information about a particular case, agreement, whatever that might be, uh, search became important. But honestly, in those early document management systems, search was oftentimes something that wasn't very functional. Um, the capabilities weren't all that strong or reliable. And oftentimes that was one of the biggest complaints is that folks just really couldn't search effectively to find their content. One of the next evolutions in document management uh, and a pretty significant change was the concept of a three-tier application. And so not to get overly technical or complicated, um, but you went from the concept of having a computer that connected to a network drive um, that worked on documents and then potentially connecting to a database to find profile information and to kind of manage security and, and versioning and things to the idea that now there was a server that would sit in between the end user and the backend data, whether it be the database or the file stores. And that middle tier layer really added some capabilities there to do things for users, um, to create some automation, some management and things that was really just kind of the, the basis for evolving into greater and more complicated technology solutions. And so that was, that was a pretty significant uh, development. And quite honestly, it also created better stability for end users because as they were working directly against databases and file stores, any little disconnect or hiccup within the network would basically cut them off. 
whereas that middle tier introduced a little bit more stability to where it could broker the connections and not require it to be constantly communicating with the system. Another, another thing that came about about 15 or so 20 years ago uh, was the idea of matter centricity and then email management. And so these were pretty uh, revolutionary concepts in terms of document management. It was the idea that we're no longer following that card catalog model of just filling out a profile uh, when we're saving documents and kind of re relying on basic searching and metadata. We're now creating our virtual red welds, our containers, our ability to kind of compartmentalize our cases, our matters, and work within them. And then when we're done with a particular matter, we don't have to still sort through a long list of those matters. We can simply let it fall off the list based off of recent activity or unsubscribe to it, but it's all, all, always still there, uh, just not no longer needed to be uh, front of mind. And on the email management side, it was with that evolution of email and the, 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 the volume of email we were starting to see and content being attached to those emails that it made it more important to file that with the matters so we could see the correspondence going back and forth. We're no longer relying on letters and memos we're relying on that email correspondence. A lot of things are happening in email, and that needs to get filed into the document management system. So we saw the, the major players in the document management space, space start to uh, incorporate technology that would allow easier filing of emails into the system. And then the last bullet here, just in terms of the evolution, and a very critical one, is just on the business side, acquisitions that took place and, and, and various business activities. And so I'm going to and I'll talk about this one a little bit further because I think it did have significant impact on the document management space. So one of the first popular document management systems was Soft Solutions, and that uh, product uh, was was acquired by WordPerfect, which was later acquired by Novell. And Novell pretty much end of life Soft Solutions, but then incorporated some of the functionality within the Groupwise platform and trying to incorporate incorporate the email management and document management together. Another popular document management system was PC Docs. And so then PC Docs was acquired by Hummingbird and Hummingbird was then acquired by OpenText. And if you're not familiar, OpenText is a pretty massive uh, company with numerous, numerous products <coughs> and data centers and technology. Um, and it's so, so big that I feel like the original Docs Open, which eventually became DM and eDocs, uh, kind of lost focus within that larger organization. And so it's still out there and still a product that's used um, but not necessarily anywhere near as popular. It was once the, the most popular document management platform in legal, um, and now it's fallen off based on ILTA surveys. It's somewhere in that three to four uh, range in terms of the rankings. iManage, now iManage you know, um, also had some roots there. You know, when you look at the, the company as it evolved, NetRight Technologies you know, turns into iManage. iManage is acquired by Autonomy. Autonomy is, is later then acquired by HP, and then after struggling for a couple of years with you know, the inability to really focus the way they wanted to and get the, uh, the investment in their product line, uh, the folks from iManage ended up basically separating back out from HP so they could take back over control and drive the company forward and continue to focus on the development of that. And so you, know, you could say that they may have seen the example of PC Docs and you know, that uh, eDocs platform and how it got lost in the mix at OpenText and iManage was experiencing something similar with HP, uh, and they really were trying to avoid that issue and kind of bring back uh, the product to their ownership so they could deliver. I'll also notice another popular document management system is WorldDocs, and that's uh, from the World Software Company. And this is you know, probably one of the most you know, stable companies that's out there. Um, there hasn't been any sort of acquisitions or anything over the last 25 years or so that they've been providing document management solutions. So that's another uh, major player in the market. And then the last one that I'll touch on here is, is net documents. And as far as net documents goes, what we, we can tell you about them, Soft Solutions, you know, the folks that were part of Soft Solutions and developed that product uh, started net documents in the late 90s. Uh, and it was the first completely cloud-based SaaS document management platform. And so, you know, for those last 20 some years, uh, net documents has existed and delivered that cloud platform. Um, they've had some investments from companies like Burlake Capital, um, but it kind of continues down that path of still being net documents. So I just highlight this because in terms of that business activity, uh, a lot of times that's what kind of spurs the whether or not there's innovation happening or not based on the overall direction from the company. So, so that's just a, a brief, brief uh, background of the document management space. So I would also encourage you, uh, Affinity has a, a podcast called Docs on the Rocks, and just yesterday, uh, they, we released a history of document management podcast that you can go out and listen to and get some more in-depth 
uh, information there from some of the folks at Affinity. So let's talk about some of the more recent changes. And so the first thing is security demands. And so, you know, what we continue to hear from clients, and this, is, this isn't just within the last year or so, this has been happening in building for years, um, but the security audits that they're receiving from their customers, from their, their clients, are becoming more and more demanding and you know, wanting to know how they're setting up their system, how they're storing content, how they're securing the matters specific to that particular client. And those security demands and audits have become almost a full-time job all by themselves. So the security demands on you as a firm are now being passed off to the document management vendors in terms of making sure you're properly securing and encrypting and controlling your data. Mobility needs is another big one. Uh, you know, as, as technology has evolved, we've become a, a community where we're not necessarily just sitting at our desk every day and doing work, where we can basically have full access to everything on our desktop computer and just work you know, you know, throughout the business day. We are up and mobile, we are moving around, we are traveling, and as we're doing that, you know, you know, we need the technology to support us. You know, me personally, you know, my wife is a lawyer and you know, she travels frequently. You know, this week she's out in Vegas at a conference, uh, but she still needs all the technology to go with her to be able to continue to work her cases, her deals, and be able to get things done. And so that mobility is now driving the need to be able to get to your documents. The desire for collaboration, you know, I briefly mentioned before with a network environment, you're able to now collaborate internally, but this is now spreading to the fact that we want to be able to collaborate externally. And whether that is with our, our clients and allowing them to have access to content, to contribute to that content, um, to be able to work back and forth, whether it's the idea that we wanna be able to kind of co-author and simultaneously share a document on screen and, and edit that document and basically be on a call together and working through the changes and working on different sections or even potentially working with opposing counsel or co-counsel uh, on certain types of information gathering and whatever that might be. But that desire for collaboration is continuing to grow, whereas those historic needs of you know, metadata versioning and searching are no longer enough. So in all of this, you know, in terms of our demands on the vendors is, is all kind of resulting in a major push for innovation. It's no longer acceptable for the vendor to tell us what their roadmap is and then deliver that uh, we we are basically demanding that they meet our needs, and so you're seeing you know the constant releases of new versions and new features and new functionality happening, and you know that that pace is has been ever increasing, and so that push for innovation is great. Um, it's definitely something that's good from the technology perspective. Um, you know when it comes time for the management, the deployment, uh, or even you know the user training side of things, that's where it could create some challenges for us. It's just keeping up with that pace. And what what has all this led to? This has all really led to cloud acceptance, you know, because as we start to talk about security, you know, generally speaking, an individual law firm cannot meet the security uh, requirements on their own that a, a vendor that's just doing this you know, as their focus can do. Um, delivering the mobility, the innovation, the collaboration tools, all that sort of stuff is basically leading to a situation where folks are more open to going to the cloud because it's not actually less secure as some had originally been concerned with and exposing their data, it's actually giving them the ability to be more secure than they might have been, have more functionality and capabilities. So as we talk about cloud acceptance, it has opened up for us the ability to have more robust solutions. So similar to the fact that that vendor can make things more secure because that's all they're doing is they're, they're creating a cloud platform. Uh, it also means that they can incorporate you know, bigger and better technology. Uh, as a law firm, as we try to stand up indexing uh, servers and email management servers and uh, record servers and all these different components became a lot for us to manage to try to meet that functionality. And as we rely on a vendor who can basically you know, you know, pull their resources and provide that for us, we are now getting more robust solutions than we possibly could when we're running an on-prem document management system. The cloud is also giving us the uh, greater ease for implementing third-party integrations. You know, so again, if we were on-prem and trying to install solutions that would create integration points for us from our time and billing, um, you know, our knowledge management, you know, our discovery solutions, whatever that might be. You know, we were basically all installing our own instances and trying to manage those and maintain versions of things like that. Uh, with the cloud, you know, we're getting to the fact that vendors have uh, APIs and, you know, that vendor-to-vendor -vendor communication. And so it's a pretty consistent uh, connection point once it's been established and that can be recreated easily from customer to customer. And it gives us the ability to leverage again more and greater technology by having having these cloud-based systems that are out there. There are still security considerations and making sure that that communication is secure and data is managed, 
um, but the ability to create those integration points is much easier. It is even the playing field. And so when we talk about even in the playing field, oftentimes when you look at firms and you look at smaller firms versus larger firms, they're trying to compete with the large firms for business. And so when we talk about the customers of the document management platform, now that we're looking at cloud-based systems, the customers are now able to leverage the same technology that the large firms are. So firm size is kind of being eliminated because I just basically need to invest in a cloud-based system. I'm gonna pay my subscriptions and I'm going to invest in internet bandwidth. Uh, and that's, it's really you know, that shift of expense from managing on-prem systems and trying to have someone that can maintain those for us goes away you know, from the expense and then the staffing side of it to the point that now I can leverage technology in the cloud and be running the latest and greatest and keeping pace with the largest firms, you know, despite their size and potential you know, buying power. It's also even the playing field for vendors. You know, so you'll see, you're seeing more and more vendors. I was just at Legal Tech um, earlier this month, and there are so many vendors that pop up that you know, I, I don't even recognize their name from year to year, and you ask yourself, well, where do they come from? But with, with the ability to build cloud solutions, and the fact that you're building those connection points and you're able to leverage Microsoft or Amazon or other, other vendors uh, to have the infrastructure for you, it's giving more options out there for vendors to develop tools and solutions and, and products to, to provide to the customers as well. So you have more options, you have the easier implementation of those options and the better integration. So all of this has led to more competition, which generally speaking is better for all of us. And you know, when we look back at that history, and the evolution of document management systems, there tended to be one primary vendor at a time that was the market leader, and that would shift from time to time from soft solutions to you know, the, the eDocs EM to iManage. And, and so as that's kind of evolved, we're now seeing a more competitive landscape where there can be more players involved providing solutions and options to meet different needs. And so, and, and that push to continue to innovate and to provide better solutions is there. And so you can no longer just rest on the fact that I am the market leader and I have all of these customers out there and they have no better option to move to. You need to keep innovating to keep pleasing those customers you know, or, or they will move on. So let's talk about the immediate horizon. And I intentionally picked this picture. You know, we see that you know, the sun's kind of coming up. Uh, it's reaching the clouds there. You know, there's some question whether this is going to turn into a beautiful sunny day or the clouds are going to kind of create some cloudiness. And this to me is you know, kind of that concept of, you know, we're moving into this cloud-based you know, SaaS type of a solution in the industry. And how is that going to kind of evolve? You know, is it gonna be a smooth transition? You know, what kind of problems are we going to have? And where, where, are we, where are we headed here? So as we talk about the immediate horizon, you know, we've got the, uh, one thing I would say, I'm gonna say is that we definitely see an accelerated uh, pace of cloud adoption. You know, as we're looking at firms that are looking to upgrade their document management system, you know, the majority of them are looking to move to a cloud-based system. They see the advantages, you know, they see the benefit there, and quite honestly, they're basically comparing the, the cloud-based vendors for the most part, and you know, that's where we see the majority of them going. And so the pace at which folks are moving to the cloud is, is pretty frantic. And what does this mean though? You know, when we talk about a platform like NetDocuments, um, where they have you know, 700,000 uh, users on their system and, and over 10 billion files, now you're really seeing you know, whether or not that platform can hold up and to continue to support that growth, that volume, the user expectations that are out there um, to continue to serve it. And the same thing on the iManage side. You know, they've got their cloud, pro their iManage cloud platform. And as that, as their uh, growth continues, you know, can their platform actually sustain and, and continue to take on that growth? And so it's a really critical time for vendors in the document management space. Um, to see if they've built solid cloud solutions and if they can continue uh, to kind of build on that and make sure that they can support the growth and the user expectations that they're taking on. The next item that's really, this has basically been uh, emerging now for the last couple of years, but you hear a lot of promises from the vendors and you hear them talking about what they're going to deliver and what they're going to do. And you're starting to now hear from customers to say, well, you know, you've been promising us this, we really need to see you delivering. And so as you know, one customer told me, one of the things that they closely monitor is the roadmap of, of the vendors. You know, what, what did they put out that they were going to deliver? Um, did they deliver it and how, how well were they in line with the time frame that they had put forth? And you know, what was the success of that, of that delivery? And sometimes that's the delivery of their own product. Sometimes that's an acquisition turning into another product. Um, and sometimes it's partnerships and things like that. But I think you know, 2020 is definitely a very important year 
to see if the folks like Net Documents and iManage can continue to grow the way they're growing and continue to deliver with their platforms um, in, in the way that they've they've done so far, and whether or not they can kind of then also deliver on the promises that they're making in terms of the products and the solutions and, and the, the the variety of things that they've put out there. The other thing we are definitely seeing now is that improved collaboration. And so as, as solutions are out there, it's really becoming important that you know, years ago, we, you know, working in law, working in house and working with firms, everyone was trying to kind of build their own intranets and then extranets. And those extranets were going to be spaces to collaborate with their clients. And it was building and maintaining a completely separate system, possibly having connections into your document management, possibly showing directly that content, possibly creating a separate copy of it but a whole other system to maintain and other considerations to make. And so now you're seeing within these document management solutions that they're building in the collaboration. You know, one of the things when we talk about net documents is that it was really built for collaboration from the beginning. And the whole intent there was to provide a collaborative environment where users that, you know, had their own, you know, their own repository could easily work with other folks in other repositories. And so that concept of being able to collaborate you know, between the systems is, is very important and becoming critical because they no longer want to build separate systems to provide these, this functionality. They want to get it directly from the document management system where the content resides. And so the last point here is a focus on information governance. And this has been a topic that's been talked about for years. Uh, a lot of places, you know, they'll, they'll have it on their list and, you know, they talk and talk and talk. And it's tended to be the first thing that would be cut from the budget. Is that you know we you know we just didn't see you know, the value or we just couldn't make that investment to really go forward with a formal information governance uh, policy and plan. And so now we're starting to see that that's changing. Is that it's almost becoming a situation where you don't necessarily have a choice and you have to kind of go forward and and, and have a policy. And so let's just talk about what that means. Now on one side it's the closed security model, and what that means is that instead of everything being public by default, that you're taking a more uh, pessimistic approach and saying, you know what, I'm not going to have everything public by default. I'm going to start logging things down based on type of staff, based on practice area, based on role, whatever that might be, but um, being a little bit more sensitive to the security of your content. And what's driving this? It's the fact that it's really about the exposure and the fact that as a lawyer, you can't risk your reputation um, by having content exposed that's that's inappropriate and that it needs to be controlled and so the closed security model is one step in that direction in addition you know this is not something that it potentially has the capacity to take on and manage if you even have the it re it resources in-house uh, and they probably also don't have the business knowledge to know if something is appropriate so handing this off to the end user the people you know the, the the person that's in charge of a matter, you know letting them you know give the approval to say if if if, if john and susie should have access they make that decision because they're the ones that are intimately aware of that matter in the business. And so putting that, the control in the hands of the end users themselves as opposed to having something that IT is managing for them. Aggressive retention policies. So historically speaking, I haven't seen a lot of um, you know, law firms that are, are so hung up on paying for storage that they had to reduce their footprint uh, significantly. It's generally more about, again, protecting the data and saying I should not retain more than I, I really need to because I'm exposing myself to additional risk. And so now you're starting to really see the development of retention policies and enforcement of those retention policies to make sure you're keeping only what you need to keep for as long as you need to keep it, and you're not creating that unnecessary exposure to the risk of, of data being uh, accessed inappropriately. And with all of this comes the, the need for powerful auditing and reporting, and the idea that as you know, somebody that's trying to manage my data, I need to make sure I'm seeing who's accessing it, when they're accessing it, what they're doing with it, and be able to report on that so I can show that I have control of my data, it's not being exposed, the right people are having access to it, and if not, I can I can act on that. So now imagine the future. And so as I was coming into this, you know, that the question was really just, hey, you know, what what would you envision the, the future uh, document management system to look like? And so there are a few options. It could be that we abandon DMS altogether and people just kind of save documents wherever they save them, network drives, Dropbox, OneDrive, whatever that might be, and kind of just have the Wild West. So that wasn't something very exciting to dig into. It could be the survival of the fittest. And so we're basically saying that you know, we've got the IMENGES, the NetDocuments, the WorldDocs, the, the, the EDOCs, and, and on and on. 
you know, is somebody going to win out and become the de facto document management platform? Uh, probably not. So, you know, we didn't want to focus there. Are one of the major players, Amazon, Google, or Microsoft, or, or others, going to kind of, you know, pay special attention to this space and, and develop something? And so, you know, we've seen you know, things like Google Docs, and we've seen Microsoft in the past um, kind of flirt with the idea of creating a document management system. But it's one of those areas where it's, there's a lot of complication uh, for the size of the market and the complexities and things and creating integrations to other systems as opposed to relying on other people to create integrations to your system is, is difficult to manage. And so we have yet to really see them make that type of investment and commitment uh, to the document management space. So I basically created my own and I just called it the 1A2K document management system. And so um, that's, you know, 1A2K is just a, a nickname that's been uh, developed uh, in terms of being a, you know, a primary and responsible person for a project. And so within that system, you know, the first thing I would say is it has to be web-based. It has to be something that has an interface that you can get to on any device, wherever you're at consistently uh, and be able to work within it. And then, you know, the next point I would make is I think it needs to be free, you know, and, you know, I manage net documents and others may not want to hear it, but if you want to get user adoption and you want to get widespread use of your system, I think there has to be kind of a starting point where it's free. You, know, you look at things like LinkedIn and you look at you know, Twitter or uh, Facebook, whatever it might be, you know, a lot of that starts with the fact that people can freely use the system, they can leverage it, and then as they, you know, see value in it, they become dependent on it and potentially see other other use cases for it, and then are willing to make an investment. But uh, by having that free level of access, you now have the ability to say, okay, well, I'm going to have paid feature options, I'm going to have paid content subscriptions, but initially I'm going to give them access to a system that they can work within and do the basics of document management which have been out there for years and years and years, um, and then they can they can basically upgrade to more powerful features and things. It has to be a single global repository. You know, so we talk about being able to collaborate, and I want to be able to collaborate with anyone. You know, that's, this is why things like OneDrive and Dropbox and things become popular, because so many people can have an account that you can share this content across different organizations if you wanted to. Um, and there's some questions about the, the controls and the access and, and the management of that data. But really, a document management system that has one global repository uh, that everyone in the world is using creates that ability to then have a fully collaborative environment. Voice recognition and digital dictation, you know, just the idea, if we see it with our phones, you know, you know we, when we're talking, you know, I, I, I would swear that times my phone is just listening to me, and the next time I go into LinkedIn or Facebook, or whatever it is, it's now showing me an ad for whatever I just talked about, even though I never typed it in an email or searched for it in a browser. And so the idea that I can use that, that quality voice recognition and digital dictation to be able to compose content and to manage my system. And I'm just jokingly kind of put out here in version two, maybe jokingly, um, a brainwave receiver, you know, so that we can basically just think it and let our thoughts now drive what we're doing within the system, as opposed to relying on uh, having to actually interact with you know, typing or whatever that might be. Uh, this next point, I think this is, you know, where a lot of a lot of things fall down is that, you know, we have different types of files we need to work in and, you know, how are we uh, working within different versions of a word processor or, or different, you know, uh, you know, file formats, whatever it might be. And so having a universal uh, embedded file editor within our document management system now opens us up to be able to work on any type of content from anywhere, all within that web-based system. And so in some of these things, you start to say, you know, how realistic it is. Um, but even even with that concept, when we're seeing smart previewers being deployed by Net Documents and iManage, where it's giving you some great annotation capabilities within any file type, and so you see that technology starting to emerge that could potentially give us what we're looking for there. An AI personal assistant, you know, we, we all know about you know Surrey and and uh, and others that we can basically talk to, um, but the idea that we have something that's embedded there to help us predict what we want. To help us, you know, go out and, you know, our next task we're going to be doing is going to be provided, uh, you know, for us in some sort of predictive manner, and the fact that we can have the on-demand learning and support. So anytime I need to, I can just say, hey, you know, how how do I compare two versions of a document, or whatever that functionality is? How do I share this with outside counsel, and let that happen on-demand with an interactive system that's intelligent enough um, to learn from my behaviors and help me to move that forward. And then the last one just throwing in there being kind of an Avengers fan is you know the holographic touch screens. But again, you know, how how wild of a thought is this? You know, the fact that we might be able to project something from our phone or our watch or our glasses or whatever that might be and turn it into some sort of interactive screen 
uh, that we'd be able to kind of move things around. We'd be able to sort things, uh, search, search for things and do some, some concepts there that seem like it's pretty foreign and pretty you know, uh, realistic. Um, but really you start to see this technology emerging and you're starting to read articles from MIT where things are being built that are moving down this path. And so, you know, just in a, you know, fun, you know, kind of creative type of style, largely based off of my you know, addiction to watching sci-fi, I came up with these concepts of things that I think really would create for us a document management system that would gain great user adoption, provide collaborative uh, aspects across all types of organizations, and give us the, the flexibility to do what we need and continue to evolve within our document management space. Okay, so I'm gonna hand this back to Karen right now. She's gonna let me know if there are any questions that have popped up at this point and uh, give you a rundown of some of our other offerings there. Great, thank you, Ron. Uh, it sounds like the future is really bright and I really want one of those brainwave receiver things. Uh, good, good idea. Um, we do not have questions at this point. So uh, with that, I'll just say thank you to everybody for attending. Uh, and if you are intrigued by Ron's presentation this afternoon, uh, we and want to learn more about the future of document management uh, through Ron's eyes or anyone else's, I encourage you to take advantage of our free 30 minute consultation. This is your chance to speak with one of the DMS experts at Affinity and get those questions answered. Uh, just reply to my follow up email I'm about to send and I'll do the rest. Uh, we have more DMS focused sessions coming soon. In March, Ron will be back to explain how DMS can help protect your data. Uh, we're also adding some sessions in April uh, about imaging and scanning solutions for DMS. Um, I'll include links to find out more about those sessions in my follow up email, or you can jump on to affinityconsulting.com slash webinars for all the details. Please do share your feedback with us on the survey that follows and join us again soon. Thanks everyone. Thank you.